All right, hey, we've graduated uh, John chapter six. We're moving uh, qu- right along, you know, probably not as fast as some of you want to, but look, it's, there's so much great material uh, in these verses, it's hard to pass up. John chapter six today, and uh, we're gonna read verse five. The Bible says this, then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now, like you're already familiar with the story, this of course is the feeding of the 5,000 uh, in the wilderness. We're not necessarily sure where this place was, probably Bethesda, northeast side of the Sea of Galilee. But these people, 5,000 men, we're not even counting the women and children. Some people say maybe up to 12,000 people total. We're not necessarily sure, but a really large group of people, which is the Bible, why the Bible calls it a multitude. But they've been following Jesus. You know, they've been, you know, observing the ministry. They've been watching carefully. Some of them seem to be engaged in faith and belief. Um, they've been listening to his teachings, and uh, there they are. You know, they they were weary, they were hungry, and they needed to eat. So, so Jesus poses like he so often does, right? He doesn't just doesn't always just give the answer to his disciples. Oftentimes. He poses a question so that they have to work through the process themselves. You know, I think sometimes we're in that spot where it's like, man, can't we just have the answer? We just, we would just prefer that he gives a definitive answer, tells us what we do in a situation, gives us the uh, precise direction that we need to move in, and you know, it would simplify life. You know, maybe you've got one of those issues today. You've been really seeking God. You know, there's a decision that's been set in front of you, and um, you just want the Lord to give you the answer, but he has, he's not given that answer. He's not told you definitively. And you know, sometimes, sometimes you can get frustrated. Sometimes you think, well, you know, I just want to be obedient, and so you could, you could end this process really quickly if you just gave me what I was looking for. But you know, he is doing more than that in your life. There's a reason, there's a purpose. There's a purpose for him posing this question to Philip, even though, because listen, the Bible says in verse six that he knew what he was gonna do, but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So he poses this question all the while, he knows exactly how he's going to handle the situation. The Bible says that he was testing Philip. Now this wasn't like a a pass or fail type of test. This was a refining test. This was a maturing test. This was a growing test. This was a, a learning opportunity for Philip that I am sure he never forgot. Like this was one of those things he was able to look back on in his life and there were principles of divine wisdom that he had gleaned from the situation as he looked back in hindsight. And you know, hindsight is always 2020. How much more important was it for Philip to be able to learn in the process? How much more important was it for him in the present to be able to see how Christ worked these things out supernaturally and miraculously, but then also for his future to have the experience uh, like an anchor for his soul in coming future trials and challenges to be able to look back in the rearview mirror and see how Jesus led him in a situation that would in fact help guide him in future situations. You know, I just want you to think this through today. I don't know what it is that you're going through. I don't know what challenges are set before you. I don't know, you know, what you've been seeking from the hand of God, what answers you've been pursuing him for. It may be that you've hit that threshold, you've hit a wall, you're frustrated, you want the answer, you want the solution. And I'm saying to you today, if you love the Lord and he's not provided the answer for you, there's a reason. There's purpose even in that. There is purpose in the silence of God. And and one thing for sure you know that he is doing is he is shaping your heart. He is refining you. He is preparing you. He's laying the groundwork for wisdom in situations to come. And he's also laying the groundwork for a mighty move, a miracle that he is going to work in your present. The bottom line is this, you need to choose to trust him. You need to choose to trust him. 
And you need to choose to learn from the situation. What is it that he's teaching you? How is, is he instructing you? What area is he growing you in? How is he shaping your heart so it bears the image of his heart? Because at the end of the day, that's what matters most. Sometimes we find ourselves pursuing or seeking after his hand when we ought to be seeking after his face. Listen, the guidance will come. The answer will come. What you need to do today is focus on the face of Christ and pursue communion and intimacy with him. And as you do that, he is gonna handle everything. Father, thank you so much for this encouragement in your word and the work of your son in Philip's life and how we can learn from this. Lord, there's, there's purpose in your silence. There's purpose when you pose the question back to us. And we don't wanna miss that. God, we don't wanna be so consumed with finding the answer that we miss the beauty of your face, intimacy with you in the process. And just trusting God that you know exactly what it is that you're going to do. And really, we have nothing to worry about. Father, I pray that you would really encourage and strengthen those who are watching today. God, that they would be lifted up into your presence and that you would show yourself strong on their behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an awesome day.